On Christmas Eve night, we and our guests gather in the Great Hall for a night of well-mannered frivolity. This year, there's the issue of the girls, the dancing and the Yule Ball. Everyone was dressed up. None of us had a clue what we were doing. I knew I was going to have to dance in front of everyone else. I'm afraid of falling or something, and everybody turned around pointing and laughing. All the kids were able to let loose. Up to the all ball uh, is um, you know, is fraught for the actors with those uh, emotions that run high in people of their age. For the first time, they are interacting with the opposite sex. They are enjoying it, They're finding it difficult. Why do they have to travel in packs? I mean, how are you supposed to get one of their own to ask? What I like about Harry is he's pathetic at, at the whole romance thing. He's rubbish. <laughs> There's a really good scene, one of the last ones we shot, with Harry and Cho, where he asks her to the ball. And he does it incredibly without any kind of tact. He kind of shouts it out like, I just wondered if you wanted to go to the ball with me. Sorry, I didn't catch that. So many people can relate to this terrible issue of, um, of asking people out. I know how it feels to be kind of standing there going, <laughs> yeah, and having nothing to say. What happened to you? He just asked Fleur de la Cour out. What? I couldn't help it. Just sort of slipped out. In real life, it was pretty scary. So, um, it was a lot easier to do acting. The Yule Ball is first and foremost a dance. I think the kids were all quite scared of having to dance formally. Right. Put your hand on my, your right hand on my waist. Where? On my waist! I had to try to teach Rupert to dance the other day. That was pretty strenuous. This leg moves first, right? <laughs> we had to waltz around in front of everyone. It was a bit embarrassing, but it was quite funny, so... It's hilarious, actually. The look on his face is just marvellous, which is really great. When we came off the set, Rupert was... like He just looked at us and said, don't say anything, just, just don't say anything. Can we... So, of course, we had to say something to him. <laughs> Never gonna let him forget this, are you? Never. We had Wayne, what wonderful Wayne, the um, the choreographer, and they would uh, they teach these kids to dance. Some of whom could, and some of whom, by God, could not. It's so funny. The girls are so eager, and the, the guys just not there, not wanting to do it at all. I think that comes across quite well. I saw some of the rushes of that scene, and it does show the sort of awkwardness that men have with the sort of dancing thing. All the guys were looking at, you know, each other saying, help, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'd like to be able to dance, but I just don't want to learn, if you know what I mean. If everyone's got to do it, it's OK. If it's only you, then... But everyone's got to do it, so it's just a laugh. I've been doing my steps, I've been working my feet. You've seen my feet work. Yeah. <laughs> the kids were quite excited about wearing something special. All the girls got to dress up and the guys were in tuxedos. Once you're in that costume and in the, in the tux and with your cloak on and everything, you do feel a lot more elegant. Mum sent me a dress. Mine is just, oh, it's horrible. It's like pink lace all over it, covering like flowers. What are those? What are those? My dress robes. But they're all right. No lace, no dodgy little collar. Poor boy. Every time he was wearing it, he really had to laugh. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to wearing that. <laughs> then, on the other hand, there is Emma, who looks so lovely. The ball's about Emma. That was, like, the most important dress. It was like Cinderella. The dress was really a work in process. We kept on changing. We kept on changing and kept on changing. And, and Emma was getting nervous because she thought, what am I going to wear? And at the end, yes, we got it. It was absolutely gorgeous. I was absolutely terrified I was going to rip it or spill something on it or anything. So literally, I would not sit in it. I would not walk in it. I would not do anything in it apart from what I had to do in it because I was so worried I was going to wreck it. Before she comes down the stairs, she just peeps around the side of a pillar and looks down, you know that at that point she changed into something. Emma was never ugly. 
So, you know, she's always been quite beautiful. So, I mean, I was kind of like, wow, you're just even more beautiful. Obviously, it's a huge moment in the film and it is a big transformation, but, but for me, I'm kind of like, well, I've seen you at premieres. I was so nervous about the whole thing because it's meant to be such a big moment and it's going to be an anticipated moment and um, I had so many pointers from Mike about how he wanted to look. Um, I got down about three steps and fell down <laughs> in front of the whole set, which was incredibly embarrassing. But um, no, it should be good in the film. You won't see that bit. <laughs> but um, no, <laughs> it was good. Walking into the set of the Yule Ball, was absolutely amazing. Everyone had to pretend they were in awe when they came in, but I think it was really genuine, actually. It's the best set I've seen so far, I think. The description in the novel is that it's a kind of ice palace, really. There are icicles hanging from the magic ceiling. So we've taken that maybe a step further. When I went in, I was absolutely gobsmacked. I cannot tell you how beautiful everything looked. You recognise it as exactly the same space, but the transformation is nonetheless pretty complete. The whole thing, of course, looked like Swarovski crystal and was stunning. This is my big dance day. How many times have I had it? I don't know. Everyone else had about three weeks. And I only had about four days to learn because I was doing another scene. And so I'm quite, I'm quite proud of what I managed to do. Um, but it was, it was very hard and I kind of, I got to about halfway through and then I would kind of just lose it completely. It is just a rehearsal. <laughs> and you can see him on the screen. You can see dear old Dan who works for absolutely everything. And at the minute, at any rate, things may change. At the minute, God did not necessarily mean him to be a ballroom dancer, and it's just very funny. Because, of course, it's that's the character's dilemma, and there he is. He's, he is absolutely his character at that point. But because Harry's not very good, I felt I should play it down. I just would have liked to be very impressive. In my mind, I could see myself, everyone going, oh, he's such a good dancer, wow. And it didn't happen. And it needs to be much wilder. It's a bit like, yeah, a bit tame, yeah? Much wilder, yeah? It's part formal uh, and part informal. So, yeah, that'll be the first time you've seen a mosh pit at Hogwarts. <laughs> you had to get these kids who would be completely abandoned to the music. They were marvellous at that. They completely lost themselves. Yeah! They went and it's great. And then I will bow my hand. And uh, I'm going to come over to the dark side. There you go. Yeah. There were a lot of boys, a lot of girls, probably more um, in a more loose environment than we've ever had. And uh, boy, did they have a blast. We all did. I have to say, it was it was really fun. I think what Mike is really trying to capture is the really awkward teenage stage where girls and boys are interested in, in each other, and neither of the sexes quite know how to be. It really kind of takes the whole boy-girl dating thing and sort of exaggerates it slightly, but just enough so it's still believable. And it's very funny. It was enormous fun. 